Brain difference is not a crime. Mental health isn't just your problem. It's our problem. And now, Mental Health Mondays with Marla and Dave. Welcome, Welcome to, to Mental, Mental Health, health Mondays. Mondays. I'm Marla. And I'm Dave. And we are so excited about yeah. our guest today. Uh, man, you guys are in for a massive treat. Uh, but before we tell you about our guest, I want to remind you to stop by lovingbeyondreason.org or NAMI San Fernando Valley's uh, homepage. Uh, click on the Mental Health Mondays tab and support Mental Health Mondays. We want to keep bringing you interesting uh, and educational and informative uh, shows every week week oh man but i told you that we have you're in store for a treat in the world of music the incomparable layla hathaway is a five five time grammy winner and an 11 time nominee and the daughter of the legendary and beloved vocalist donnie hathaway at the tender age of 10 she lost her father to mental illness and today she speaks about breaking the silence and erasing the stigma surrounding mental illness or brain difference as we like to refer to it when we come back our guest will be layla hathaway the voice Help someone who is struggling by supporting the National Alliance on Mental Illness and be a part of the NAMI effect. Hope starts with you. All right, we're back. I have to admit that I'm a little, I'm, 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 I'm giddy, but I'm excited, but I actually miss my friend. So Lay's here <laughs> on Zoom. <laughs> Welcome to Mental Health Mondays. We Layla really appreciate Hathaway. you being here. Hi, hi, <laughs> hi, hi. Hey, girl. How are you? Good. So you guys, uh, we have to let you in on a little, little secret. Layla's one of our great friends. We've been friends for a long time. Uh, matter of fact, uh, we have to apologize to Layla like we always do in moments like these for Marla actually breaking her ankle, which was really okay. the beginning of our friendship. I'm I I'm, I'm gonna have to go to therapy because I've just, I I decided that I was um I have worked a very long time to put this in the back behind you right put uh, it behind you yeah and look and you know every time I see you on stage barefoot I feel responsible so well, quickly kind of quickly tell the story Marla quickly tell the story. The story is that in the very beginning of our relationship, Layla was in the studio collaborating with Take Six and they were doing Someday They All Be Free. Layla said, oh, what are you guys going to do later? And Dave's like, oh, my wife loves to play tennis. Layla said, oh, I used to play tennis in high school. And they came out. She was like, do you mind? And I'll, I would love to come. Dave's like, the more the merrier. She's, we're completely open. She comes out, first ball hit. Up in the air, Layla goes. Down she comes and takes a slow, crumbling fall. It was the slowest fall down ever <laughs> in the history of man. It literally felt like she was suspended. And Dave, then she's and on she the wasn't ground. even panicking. She was like, "Oh, ow, 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 yeah. my, oh my!" And then she I just said, went nice and calm. <laughs> so we were like, "Oh, don't worry about it. It's not that bad." And she's It'll, like, "No, you'll be okay." But this is Layla. She said, "No, I, I think my ankle's broken." And Dave was like, "Your ankle can't be broken can't be because broken. if it you, was, you'd, you'd be, be sweating. You'd be a cold sweat." And then. <laughs> <laughs> Well, also, at least, you'd be nauseous. At least, then, you, at least you don't feel nauseous. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it was, it was, it was, it was obviously. Sorry, Layla, you had to be at you know at the at the end it's of okay. pain. But it was God's design to for us to from that point on. You were staying in our house for like two or three pretty days. Pretty much kidnapped and, her for and the we, week. It was a it was a friendship made in heaven, and our yes. family. Layla has been with us through pretty much everything i think when we met layla lexi may have been six and yes she's I, I was sleeping on on lexi's trundle remember? <laughs> so anyway so you know it, it's one of the things that i find to be pretty amazing in the tapestry of life when we met you and became very close friends we had no idea that we would be on the journey that we ended up on with mental health yeah but mm. in our friendship we've always had open conversations Absolutely. and one of the things that um you know, we talked about was the unfortunate uh, incident of what happened with your father. And um, I, I think I want to start by just kind of talking about that just a little bit. And from the from the position from two different angles, one, the stigma and the silence that we almost seem honor bound to keep um, more so in our community as African-Americans. 
Um, and then the 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 whole world kind of watching. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. you being a child. The celebrity factor. Before you even <clears throat> could plug into what it really meant about what his diagnosis was and what he went through and his struggle. Yeah. That that was very private based on his persona that is literally the legendary anchor of music in and in, in, in our community. Our well, period I mean, in the yeah. world. In the yeah. world. Let me say that. So that's yeah. yeah that that's uh so so the first question I really have for you is what was your what is your recollection of I got to tell you um that I'm learning uh through you know therapy and time that a lot of my memory is gone I have very little memory of that time and a lot of that is trauma based a lot of that mm-hmm happened to protect me from whatever is going on at that moment. Um, What's interesting is I really appreciate that we call it, we think of it as a brain difference. It's just a difference in the chemical or the, or how the synapses fire because Mm -hmm. mental illness has so much stigma around it, particularly for people of color. Mm. And it's so baked in that we don't even really recognize that. So in a lot of ways, in a lot of families, you know, you have an uncle that's never, that's always an addict. Right. You know, you got an uncle that never comes out of his room. I had a grandfather who never came out of his room. He walked to go to do his doctor's appointments and he walked to church. He walked to mass on Sundays. So nothing was was ever discussed. That's, That's my father's father. Okay. Wow. So nothing was ever discussed about it. No one ever said, well, why doesn't pop up go outside? Right. There was no, there was no, you just accept um, that as what is. Yeah, it, it is what it is. And, and I think a lot of us had those people in our mm-hmm. families that there was something different, but we couldn't figure out what that difference was. And it wasn't talked about. And even though no one told you don't talk about it, you knew that, well, that's just what that is. And we don't talk about it. Yeah. I um, have, I have family members as well who literally, I've known them all my life. I didn't realize that the relationship that I was told that they had to the family was completely different than the reality of it. In other words, oh. considered a sister, but in, in reality, it's a, a friend of a cousin, but just oh. raised in the family at, because of a mental health issue that no one mm-hmm. said anything about. And this person is just now living in this family. So it's yeah. a, it's a, and a lot of that kind of stuff used to happen, especially back in the day for families of color and i think that is a that is a thing where again we just haven't really addressed it in the same way for instance Mm -hmm. when you said uh, a drug addict you have an uncle or or family member that's a drug addict that's actually a mental illness as well we understand that now Mm -hmm. those are things that we deal with but that's not the way that we dealt with it right right for sure and a lot of people still don't deal with it like that and until we get to a point in the world where in the same way that you say this girl has a broken ankle she'll be sleeping on the trundle <laughs> <laughs> you you also you need to say this person has uh, a different sense of right. self or or a brain difference and right. we need to treat them like they have an illness that we need to tend to we may not be able to cure it but we need to help them manage it right. and that means that it's out in the open well i have a question for you lay did did your dad have an actual diagnosis my father's actual diagnosis was paranoid schizophrenia. And as I get older, even with that, I have questions hmm. because, you know, in a, in a, in a huge way, I was not there as an adult. Mm-hmm. So right. when I look around me now, I know a lot of musicians and I know a lot of guys and girls, mostly guys mm-hmm. that I would look at and say, Hmm, mm-hmm. you might, be suffering you, know, right. you know you know you might be going through something you might have something that we need to talk about and mm-hmm. you might have many aces you might need you some may, help you might need a little help yeah and i think that a lot of times um i it, it's a hard one for me because i wasn't there to see what that right. was mm-hmm. i know that there have been days in my life where i felt like oh they're coming to get me for sure mm. they're going to come get me and put me in a coat mm. like diana ross and lady sings the blues and i'm gonna be in a round room looking for a corner <laughs> there are those days yeah. and and we all have right. those days. Mm. 
So for me, mental mental illness is such a spectrum. Correct. It, 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 it absolutely really, is. really, really hard to pinpoint all the time what that is. Even even within the diagnosis, for sure. Even within the diagnosis. So we'll, we'll be right back. We have more with Layla Hathaway in a minute. Don't move. When Dave and Marla get together, it's hot. You may not realize it, but these words, often used to describe someone with a mental health condition, can be very harmful. In a country where one in five people are affected by a mental health condition, it's time for all of us to step up and change the conversation. Just because someone's struggle isn't obvious on the outside doesn't mean they aren't hurting on the inside. We need to see the person, not the condition. Join with me, pledge to be stigma free. It's time for the Mental Health Minute with Marla and Dave. We continue this week with the key findings of the Mental Health State of America according to the annual re report released by mentalhealthamerica.gov. Here's what the data shows. There is still un there is still an unmet need for mental health treatment among youth and adults. 60% of youth with major depression did not receive any mental health treatment in 2017 and 18. Even in states with the greatest access, over 38% are not receiving the mental health services that they need. The percentage of adults with a mental health illness who are uninsured increased for the first time since the passage of the Affordable Care Act. Nationally, 10.8% are uninsured, totaling 5.1 million adults. This year's report includes a spotlight on the impact of COVID-19 on mental health. Here are the facts. The number of people looking for help with anxiety and depression has skyrocketed. From January to September in 2020, 315,220 people took the anxiety screen, a 93% increase over the 2019 total number of anxiety screens. 534,784 people took the depression screen, a 62% increase over the 2019 total number of depression screens. The number of people screening with moderate to severe symptoms of depression and anxiety has continued to increase throughout 2020 and remains higher than rates prior to COVID-19. Over eight in 10 people who took a depression screen have scored with symptoms of moderate to severe depression consistently since the beginning of the pandemic in March 2020. Throughout the month, we'll continue to bring you the results of the report. This message is brought to you by Mental Health Mondays in conjunction with Loving Beyond Reason and NAMI San Fernando Valley. never do anything without thinking about it first. Marla is a feeler. I basically wear my personality on my scene. But when Marla and Dave get together, it's Can like you guys see my emails that they, the people right. can't hear? Is it me? She's saying people can't hear. Um, I think we have a little technical issue before we get back to the show. Uh, I'm going to have our producer actually jump on that and get right on that for us. Um, uh, but I have a question. Uh, as we were talking about, you gave us uh, um, the formal diagnosis that your dad had. Um, and I know a lot of times when I was growing up, if my dad was going through some issues, he was a little too angry to kind of he was dealing with paying bills. So that would kind of get on his nerves from time to time. Uh, my mom would kind of hide the impact of that from us. And so, you know, he'd be in the back and she'd come out every now and then. <laughs> everything's fine but you hear stuff <laughs> stuff going on in the back that you see makes you think well it's not that it's not fine but okay you know I don't, was that the similar kind of thing happening uh, in your household did did your mom kind of protect you from some of those things or do you, and I know you said that you have a hard time remembering uh, yeah. that time period I can I can tell you that I mean you know my mother very well mm -hmm. she she I mean, she did a phenomenal job. Yeah, she did. She's a phenomenal making, person. Yeah, of making everything as normal, you know, mm -hmm. as possible. Mm -hmm. um, we were raised with our family. We had Christmas and homecomings and uh, summer vacations and spring breaks. You know, within 
within a household that has trauma, which is just about every single household, exactly. mm-hmm. there's, there's, there's a fair amount of it that rubs off on the children. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And you have to, you, there has to be some trauma to deal with some trauma. Yeah. So um, I can say that I really feel like my mom did what she knew how to do. She mm. made it really normal for us as normal mm-hmm. as she could. Um, she did not grow up in a household where there was any like apparent mental illness. Mm-hmm. So I know that for her as a um, like a 23, 25, 30 year old woman yeah. in this situation that it, it was it was something, you know, something that she didn't understand how to deal with. And she really tried to educate herself on how to deal with it. And one of the things that she always talks about is the fact that um, it, it's really hard to get help for people. Mm. And, and I can um, imagine even in back then it had to be much harder. Impossible. Yeah. Almost, that? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's <clears throat> one of the things that she talks about a lot. And I know Marla, you and Ma have had a lot of conversations about that. Like how do you, you, it, they make it so hard for you to get help for people. Right. Um, I, I, my hope is that that is, uh, opening up. And I think there's a whole generation of kids now, particularly artists, that are talking about what they're going through, mm. you know, that are, that are on their Instagram and on their Facebook. And right. it's not a small thing that they, they have a huge audience and they're able to say, I'm sad today. I don't feel right today. Do you feel like I feel? And I think that's so important. Perfect example, to be totally honest. I don't know, Layla, if you had, were able to take the time yesterday evening to watch the interview with um, Prince Harry and Megan. Markle, but that that was huge as well on a mental health level, because we have these these ideations of people that we just feel like if you're Donnie Hathaway, that can't be the case. Life has to be great. If you're Layla Hathaway, what do you mean you're sad? If I had a voice like yours, if I could, you know, if I it 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 goes on and on. And so, David and I were were talking about that, and I and even in the car I was saying how how blessed I feel that that so many are willing to to join us in these open dialects because every conversation is really a super important conversation to have and you do have a platform and it brings some type of normalcy to the difference we are very different right. and you brought up something about the spectrum we're different as humans we even if you're not off the spectrum of norm I look at it like a ruler there's micro measures of uniqueness within what we consider mm-hmm. this consensus norm. Then Absolutely. you have people that are eccentric and they're off either side because of their difference. And those are just the people that I realize don't, we can't identify or relate to inside the social, social norm or the productive norm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I, one of the things that I'm going to ask you, do you do you subscribe to or even believe that you know your dad was also a musical genius? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and and absolutely. and and that part of a brain that fires in that way, you know, it's yeah. almost like the yin and the yang. Do you see it as as just the 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 other side of a gift that's extraordinary? It's interesting. Particularly with people that are uh, strongly gifted, you find a lot of more left brain people in that way. Which is why sometimes I question those diagnoses. And I'm not a doctor. I don't have my degree. Mm -hmm. But I, again, associate with a lot of really smart, Mm -hmm. really talented, kind of deep people. And Mm -hmm. they seem mostly crazy. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) And I say that it's kind of a joke. But there there are these eccentricities that look like what we were brought up to believe. Like, oh, well, that's crazy. Right. Right, it's just out of the spectrum of norm of norm. Yeah, really, wait, wait, you're yeah. not, yeah, you're not anything we recognize in our consensus norm. Right, and so what does that mean? Does that mean that, you know, my grandfather who was in his room all the time watching television, and who walked to mass and who walked to do his exercise, what was his diagnosis, and how did they even figure it out? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. Well, I mean we. First of all, we appreciate you taking the time to talk to us, especially about difficult subjects like this. We're going to take a break. When we come back, more with Layla Hathaway. All right. You know what that fun music implies, Marla? I have to do this now. 
because this is my my shoulders messed up. <laughs> that's that's Sway. Marla's new dance. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's time for the poll question. Uh, last week we asked you what is the most difficult mental illness to treat, uh, and your Did options you? were A. Depression, B. ADHD, or C. BPD. Uh, for those who are not familiar with those acronyms, that. The, the what acronyms. that stands for, the acronym, is uh, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder is ADHD. Borderline Personality Disorder is BPD. BPD. Uh, and what according you, to... What do you think, Lang? I, I think BPD by far. Yes. Uh, and I will, I'll give you a little a little insight to that. Uh, is that Lang. right? That it is, is correct. absolutely correct. Part of the reason BPD may be so difficult to treat, according to the American Psychological Association, or the APA, could be that while individual individuals with bpd may be quick to open to a therapist they are also that much more quick to shut down because they do not accept things are actually their fault so everything it happens outside of them so and to them so and, and when they disagree with the therapist suddenly the therapist is the enemy so they they have a hard time being consistent with their therapy marla what's the poll question for next week what percentage of adults with mental illness report an unmet need for treatment 12%, 18%, or 24%. Yes, and so we'll leave that one as a cliffhanger. Make sure you, wherever our social media is, uh, stop by and answer the poll question when you see it. We would love to hear from you, and this is a way to uh, get some information in a fun way. And let us hear your voice by doing what? Vote. Vote. They have to turn up their volume. Right quick, okay. for everybody who's trying to listen and they can't hear it, I would like to make a suggestion. Turn your volume up. That sounds simple, okay. but uh, just, we have from our producer, just, just, uh, we turn, checked turn, and turn the, it it's, turn, it's turn it you should be able to hear it. They're good. They're turn good. up. Awesome. Dude, awesome. You, so, know, you know what's really interesting about what you just said? Hmm. About diagnoses that are hard to treat. And mm -hmm. it makes me think about all the little children that have ever gotten spanked or punished for something that they couldn't even explain was happening. Mm. And that's on the spectrum of everything. Autism, BPD, yep. uh, uh, deafness. There's so many yeah. things. Yeah, as a that, matter of um, fact, I remember, now that you say that, Layla, because our, our son actually has a diagnosis of uh, schizoaffective, schizoaffective disorder and bipolar one. Uh, and because of that, we didn't realize that till much later. And had we understood at that level, we could have seen things happening a lot earlier. There was a and time the same, honestly, to be truthful, Monisa, that's not Monisa's diagnosis, but she also has um, mental health challenges and diagnoses on the table as well. And it was equal. and it was a learning process for us. And what you said, we would punish for things that we considered aberrant behavior. And right. had we known, a matter of fact, I apologized to Monisa one time. I said, had I known, I would have never handled. I things would have that never way. let you out of the room. That's it. You'd have been in there. I didn't say that, but <laughs> I wouldn't have, I'd have handled it that way. Push your food under the door. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, <laughs> the the good thing about it is we can laugh about such a serious subject. No, we, the... we, it, we we're not. I mean, I'm I'm you know that's just you know I I make general fodder just for a second. But the reality is what Layla's saying, we have experienced, and it yeah. is true, and it's only in retrospect when you look back, and you're holding someone responsible for a behavior based on your trajectory and understanding and that's the thing that so so you almost have to for, forgive the parent and the mm. parent's behavior so this is my thing this is what i'm saying right now people of color mm. don't beat your kids don't do it just don't do it because there is a genetic trauma that we are all experiencing and that we will forever all experience don't beat your kids just try not to beat them. And you you know, might learn something. And you know what's That's interesting? True. I'm going to add on to what Lay is saying, and I think we talked about this with a, with a guest um, a few weeks ago. When you talk about the root of mental illness being trauma, every black person has post-traumatic stress syndrome being born in this country. You've experienced trauma. I, I, Those I, that don't even know they have it. Exactly. Have it. Oh, yeah. No, I could wow you, wow you with the stories of some of my spankings. Legendary. Um, <laughs> Same. Uh, yeah, I mean, when I say legendary, it, if I were to say it out loud, people would look at my parents differently 
They would go back. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Don't tell. Don't tell. Exactly. Don't tell. Um, but what I will say is it's interesting that you kind of brought up the fact that a lot of creative people also seem to uh, allow part of their create creativity is to allow their mind to just go and explore places that and most, most of us of, have governors. Most people would not go and explore. You don't have uh, the option because your brain doesn't open like that. Uh, because much like your father, our son DJ is I say, without exception, one of the greatest R&B writers, songwriters that I've ever oh, wow. encountered, that I've ever awesome. encountered. Yeah. That's awesome, Dave. I didn't know that. Oh, my goodness. Lay, you will. <laughs> 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 but, but, yeah, so, I mean, and, and, and because of that, you know, I wonder, is there a way that we can better handle well, those have, types of situations? I have situations? a bit of information that you, the two of you may not know that I'd like mm. to share with Dave and Layla. Um, when someone displays the type of brain difference that, that Donnie was diagnosed with, that DJ has a similar diagnosis in the Eastern countries. And some of them, they are considered gods. People, people flock to them or in the, di for, in the diaspora for, at, for, for, for literally for advice, for healing. They literally are considered very differently than we do in the in the Western world, and I and I, I I will say that in my journey, what I have to be honest and confess is there's a selfish intent as well in the healing because I want you to to operate within Confirm. these norms. Yeah, for sure. Because and I want you. Me. I want you to be with me, and I can't yeah. relate out there. So, I, yeah. you know, so it's it's literally a responsible way to try to break through really to contain so we can all function and, and together. That's just a true confession. Well, here's a, here's yeah. another question for you, Lay. Have you ever talked with your sister about some of these issues? Oh, yeah, we definitely have uh, discussed it. It's interesting. Our, our our points of view are the same but different. You know, how you grow mm -hmm. up in a house with somebody and you see mm -hmm. things differently. I think that. Um, What's interesting is that my memory is so skewed because I have lost a lot of, of that time in my life before like age 12 or 13 mm -hmm. because of all of that um, trauma. My sister happens to be the historian in our family, so wow. she remembers everything. Wow. Man, So, and I would assume that because of that, the way those experiences impacted you is slightly different as well. Yeah, I think so. I think I'm the first child. I think um, you know what I mean. There's a lot to do with birth order and and what's happening at the house in the house at that time and mm -hmm. and what our interests are. It, it's a whole lot, and and I'm learning about it now, and it's fascinating. fascinating. Well, we appreciate the fact that you're sharing with shared with us that you are dealing with this in a therapeutic uh, absolutely uh, 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 scene as well. So because in in our community as well, it, uh, most of us have a negative view the minute you say there i'm not you know and and it's it's so necessary for for absolutely. us all absolutely layla's one of the greatest singers she said that she studies with a vocal coach you know what i mean she could be a, a vocal and probably has vocal coached others but she still goes and seeks professional help to expand her own knowledge and that's absolutely. the thing it, that it we all have to do to get here hmm. took me a while to get here i definitely you know i have a strong strong tribe of strong strong women I have a lot of alpha chick friends that I go to when I need it, and I, I'm able to bounce my ideas and learn about this and that and all of that. But really, to actually submit to, um, in the same way that when Marla broke when Marla broke my ankle, okay. All right, hold right there, Layla. We'll be right back. <laughs> we'll be right back. More with Layla in a minute. Oh, worthless. Don't trust them. They'll hurt you. You're worthless. It's pointless. When the pain of schizophrenia meets hope, everything can change. Help someone who is struggling by supporting the National Alliance on Mental Illness and be a part of the NAMI effect. Hope starts with you. It's raw, real, and unfiltered. Time always flies when you're having this much fun. 
uh you know Layla, we appreciate you and the efforts that you have uh, helped us in breaking the silence and erasing the stigma that surrounds mental health and, and being willing to talk openly about some r really serious issues that you deal deal with and to uh, kind of normalize the need to seek help i'm starting with my uh, new therapist next week and you we are absolutely Awesome. A absolutely. And I think Marla's trying to give us a hint that she is. I silenced myself, but I couldn't take it for long. She, so she... Well, I have to open up my speak hole. Oh, so I could, Lord. yeah, so I could, you know. But so. Marla, tell us about the mask that you wear. Well, these masks are, this is masks for mental health. And I, Layla's also been a recipient. And my mom custom makes each of these masks. But this one is special because it says mask it or casket. So we encourage oh. everybody to continue to stay safe. Wear your Where mask. can they get those? Because I got those for almost all my friends for Christmas, and they love them. Lovingbeyondreason.org, and hit the button that says "Mask for the number four mental health." It's right there on the bar. On the bar. Very Layla, simple. You know, before we leave, give us one uh, nugget of 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 encouragement when it comes to uh, mental health and how it can be, how music can literally help us get through some of those tough moments. Um, be gentle with yourself. I'm super hard on myself and um, I think a lot of people are hard on themselves, but mm. I have time in the day where I listen to music and it is a healer. It is again like that best friend in the room. When mm. I die, on the day I die, I'll have to say goodbye to music, mm. just like all the rest of my friends. So mm. find that music that soothes you and have a moment and just sit down and breathe and be gentle with yourself. I love it. We appreciate it. We love you um, and we, we appreciate you hanging around. We'll see you Layla's going to join us for two episodes. So, so we'll see you again see next, you week. next week. Next <laughs> week. Bye. See Bye, Layla. See you guys later. See you <laughs> next week. Layla, your doll needs clothes, sweetie. <laughs> this, is, this is not what this show is. You gotta, she you likes know. to have no clothes on. I, I understand, Layla. She's not ready for her cameo appearance, she though. She is. Look at her hair. <laughs> this has been Mental Health Monday. See you guys next week.